Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Thank you for joining us today for another episode of Condo Insider. My name is Jane Sugimura, and I am hosting uh, this episode. And today, joining me today is my co-host, Richard Emery. Say hello, Richard. <laughs> nice to be here and to sit in the left chair. It's like uh, Richard on the left, Jane on the right. Right, and today we're going to be talking about pr production of documents relating to condominium associations. And what, what's, is there, what's the background on this issue? Well, there's really two parts to this issue. Um, first, we get homeowners, a lot of times they're upset, and the statute provides them the right to have certain documents, and then they complain it's too expensive, or they expect more than they get, and, and so that's one side of the issue. What owner's rights are there in documents? The second, and, and when you talked about the statute, you're talking about 514B. That's correct. And specifically, it's 514B. And for those people who can who want to look it up, it's 154.5. Correct. Okay. And the second part of it is, in the natural buying and selling of real estate, realtors often will sign a contract, not the realtor, but the buyer and seller, and agree to disclose certain documents under Section M as in Mary. And... They can, are concerned about the high cost for a production of these documents. So there's actually two sides: is the real estate, the realtor side of it, and and the homeowner side of it. And so, you know, for the homeowners, I mean, why is this part of the condo statute? Well, I think transparency is good. I mean, in some ways, you're an indentured servant when you're buying a condo. You've signed a contract. You have to pay maintenance fees, and you elect people to control things. And you wouldn't have transparency if you couldn't have a double check and a right to see certain documents. And so it's an important thing to, for an owner to be able to have access and kind of a check and balance thing that they have a right to see documents. And so what kinds of uh, uh, documents do owners ask for? Well, what they're entitled to, what they ask for are offered and very, very different. Okay. Let's talk about what they're entitled to first. Okay. Uh, basically, owners are entitled to, I'm gonna generalize it without getting specific, to financial information, general ledgers, journals, financial statement, balance sheet, check register. You know, and this is because they pay the maintenance fees. That's right. And, and a lot of this are, uh, comes about because maybe there's an increase in maintenance fees or an assessment, and they want to know how come. Correct. Right? Right. But they're entitled to the financial statement, but they are restricted that if they're going to see delinquency information of other owners, because we're subject to the Fair Debt Act, um, that they're only entitled to those delinquencies over 90 days of age. They're also entitled to see contracts. And the recent change, uh, I want to say two years ago, but maybe it was last year, no, two years ago, where the manager, the general manager, the resident manager's contract has to be disclosed to an owner upon request, but you can redact any very personal information, such as that manager's social security number or personal address, health conditions or things along that line. Why would an owner want to see the manager's contract? Because they're curious, because the maintenance fees are going up, and they think they're paying too much money for the manager, and they have some perception that he has maybe bonuses and extra benefits. So I think it's financially driven more than anything else, that they don't believe that the board is making the best decision of what they're paying the manager. And, and, and sometimes when they ask for the manager's agreement, manager's contract, they want to see what his duties are because the, the gist of the request is the resident manager or the site manager is not doing his job. That's correct also. That, or uh, that's the perception. Yeah, that's the, that's the perception of it. But, you know, they are not entitled to everything that they want to see because uh, I made a list that was about 20 items of the requests I've received over the last 10 years that people demand, and I'll just give you a couple examples real quick, uh, that they're not entitled to. They'll say, I want to see my neighbor's ledger of his charges and payments. Well, it has nothing to do with managing the association. That's private information of the neighbor. Mm -hmm. They may say, I want to see all the letters written to him on fines and dog violations. That's, again, a personal matter, and it's not under the statute they're entitled to see. The worst I've seen I've ever gotten was I want to see the signature cards of the trust account that was open, and a copy of the bank statements. Well, the bank statements sometimes have electronic information on them, 
and you would want to redact that to protect the association. You would probably want to redact the account number so people couldn't use that information in this internet crime world we live in. So mm -hmm. uh, when we get these requests, I want to see the signature card. And someone can extract that signature and use it for other purposes. Right. So we get a lot of requests to see things that are not entitled under the statute, but in those cases, the owner is entitled to be told, we're not going to give it to you and why. And in the statute, if they want to see what they want, what documents are available, it is written in the statute. Very specific and very clear. Although there is a provision in the statute that gives the owner the right to request other documents, and the board has to answer them whether they're going to give them or not. But it doesn't require the board to give them to. And and so that's also in the statute. And and so let's say a, an owner wants to wants some documents. Do they where do they go? Do they go and ask the board first? Because the board only meets once a month or once every other month. I mean, where do they go to uh, request these documents? Well, most condos in Hawaii use a professional management company, and they're the custodian of records for the association. So they should go to the management company and request to see the documents. So that would be the Associa or the Hawaiian Hawaiiana or the Hawaiian Properties right. or Touchstone. These are the professional management companies. Yeah. yeah, they're the custodian records, and it makes sense because boards change every year, and you want to preserve your historical files. But the problem I see is an owner gets upset. And so they'll write to me, and they'll say, Richard, I want to see all of the records that's in the statute here, every contract, every invoice, every check register for the last 10 years, and I want to be able to see them and review them. And when they make that broad request, it, it, it becomes difficult to fulfill and expensive to fulfill. Why is it expensive? Well, you know, office rents in Honolulu are expensive. Most management companies uh, only keep the current year's records in their office. And so they use a professional warehouse which will be a fireproof, bombproof, kind of safe building to restore historical records. So as soon as you say you want all those records, you have to get someone to pull them from the warehouse files, deliver them to you. And there's a cost affiliated with withdrawing records from right. so the, a storage Right, so the warehouse charges us uh, to do that. Then you have to return them. And of course, someone has to make sure all this, because all these boxes are marked what's in them specifically. So we can pull by uh, date or by category of file very easily. Um, but there's a cost to it, even if it's one box or 20 boxes. Certainly it's more expensive for 20 than one, but there's still a cost of retrieval, delivery, and, and return, and someone to check to make sure that everything's put back in, a, in an order that uh, is required. So that's cost number one. Cost number two is, is something that's very, very misunderstood is an owner say, well, I don't want to pay for the copying cost of all that, so I want to go review them in the, in the, in the uh, conference room. Well, as soon as we do that, and we put these records in a conference room, you can understand it has legal implication, maybe. We have to have a clerical person sit there to make sure someone doesn't add something who didn't exist before, for example, or take something out that they don't want to be discovered. So we have to have someone sit there with the owner reviewing the records, which is an hourly cost to us because we have an employee and we're paying them hourly plus benefits plus overhead. So uh, the problem is that if owners would just simply say, what am I really interested in? If they think of the bigger picture, ask for this year's records and, and see if that leads you to want the second, third, and fourth year's records. You know, just don't get angry and hoo-hoo with everybody and say, I want everything, I'm entitled to it, because there's probably going to be a huge cost to it. So. And the statute allows the association or its managing agent to recover costs. That's correct. And you know, that means the cost of uh, copying and the cost of retrieval and the administrative fees to have the employees sit in a room and watch you to make sure you don't uh, mess with the records. Right, and what's misunderstood, if you look at the statute, it says something to the effect that every association is entitled to eight hours of free administrative time. Well, some owners take that, that every owner gets eight hours of free time. So if I have a 500-unit condo and they're embroiled in litigation, I somehow have to give 4,000 free hours of time, which is not what the statute says. The statute says the association gets eight hours. 
So the first person who comes in, if they use 10 hours, they're going to be billed for two hours and they're going to have used up to eight hours and every subsequent person is going to have to yeah, pay So if the neighbor time. comes in the following day and, and, and uh, wants services, he's got to pay for every, every That's right. uh, the, the entire time. And if he we gets knew, no eight, eight hours free. If we knew two people were coming in in advance, we would say to them, each of them, we're allotting four hours to each of you because the other person will complain, you let them in one day early, and you know how it goes. Everybody complains about it to somebody else. But it all begins because more times than not, someone is angry about something. They don't like the fact their maintenance fees were raised or there was a special assessment or they didn't like the contractor that was chosen. And so instead of trying to narrow down what they want to see, they just say, I want everything. And as soon as they say that, it's not uncommon for a management company to ask for a $1,000 deposit, depending on the extent of what they've asked for. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, when, so when somebody, uh, you know, comes in uh, and, uh, you know, requests uh, a review of the, of the documents, does, can they be refused? Well, if they want to review the documents, they should make an appointment. I mean, we've had people walk in and demand to see this um, and want to see it right now. Well, if they're asking for a copy of this last, last minutes of the meeting, someone will probably just give it to them, okay, make it easy. But uh, you, you really need to respect the fact that management companies are under contract and serving for their clients. They can't be expected to drop everything because you walked in the door without an appointment and you're saying, I want this now. But if somebody comes in and says, you know, I, I want the minutes for this, this, and this, can the managing agent say, no, you can't have them? No. In fact, uh, I would be saying to a management company that even the board can't tell them not to give it to them because the statute provides for them to have those documents. Management companies are typically licensees, being the, the manager is a principal broker, subject to the real estate laws, and they can't violate the law as a licensee. So. If somebody comes in and makes a lawful request, they have an obligation to fulfill it in a reasonable amount of time. And so if uh, an owner goes into the managing agent or even makes a request to the board and he, that owner gets a refusal to produce or let's say no response at all, is there somebody that the owner can go to complain to? Well, that's the regulated industry complaint office is, uh, Frankly, RICO, which is manages licensees, doesn't really manage the board and other people's licensees back to the broker of the management company. Uh, they regulate this to the extent, it's probably their only primary regulation authority over condos is this production of documents. So they have a form they could fill out and say, I didn't get these documents and I'm entitled to them under the statute. But again, you know, some of the complaints I've had filed against our company has been I want to see the bids, not the contracts themselves. Well, the statute doesn't provide for the, for the bids. And, you know, we've had many owners come to us and say, I want to see the bids so I can call the vendors and tell them I'm going to sue them if they accept this job. You know, so they're not entitled to the, to the mm -hmm. bids. They're not entitled to everything they may think they're, they, they would like to see. Okay, and, and, and the, the RICO, the Regulated uh, Information Complaint Office, their forms regarding complaints and explanation of the process, it's on the website, isn't it? It is. It's the available. State of Hawaii website. And they're responsive, and, uh, but again, I always tell boards or members who are uh, unreasonable to try to sit down and talk with the board of the management company and narrow their request because RICO is not going to force them to produce a document that's not under the statute they're entitled to see. Okay, well, we're going to take a break now, and then when we come back, uh, we'll be talking about the documents that realtors request. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah, okay. Hello, I'm Yukari Kunisue. I'm your host of the new Japanese language show on Think Tech Hawaii, called Konnichiwa Hawaii, broadcasting live every other Monday at 2 p.m. Please join us where we discuss important and useful information for the Japanese language community in Hawaii. The show will be all in Japanese. Hope you can join us every other Monday at 2 p.m. Aloha. 
Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Okay, we're back with uh, Richard Emery, and we're talking about uh, documents uh, relating to condos that are requested by uh, owners and, and uh, realtors. And the second part of our program is documents that realtors request in connection with um, a sales transaction, a sale of a condo. Correct. Okay, and so what kind of documents are what kind of documents are we talking about now? Well, this is the interesting thing when you look at. Um, the current 514B statute. It says these documents are that an owner or their agent can get these documents. So these documents we just talked about under uh, 154, 514B 154, their agent's entitled to. So what happens is a buyer and a seller enter into a real estate contract to under uh, uh, paragraph M, as in Mary, to provide certain documents which is like the last three board minutes, the last year's annual meeting minutes, the budget reserve study, the financial statements. And this is so that the prospective buyer can make an informed right. decision as to whether they want to complete the, the purchase in that project, right? And so owners and sometimes realtors say, well, why don't I get that for free based on this paragraph? Well, we have to look carefully again what you're talking about. You're talking about a time-sensitive transaction that People need these documents within 10 days, and there's a lot of issues because within that schedule of documents they want are two documents, one of them called an RR105C. The RR105C is a Hawaii Association of Realtor form. It is not an association document. The document is not kept in the ordinary course of business. It's required by lenders per unit on a specific date, in a sense, it's not a static document just sits there. It has four pages of legal questions that could have changed last week or last month or last night based on a decision of the board, but it discloses whether there's a maintenance fee increase, condition of the property, et cetera. Well, the realtors, the buyer and the seller, agree that they're gonna produce that RR105C. Well, the association doesn't have an RR105C. What has to happen is someone has to order the management company to prepare an RR-105C and to certify it and deliver it. And so there's a cost for that. It's and not free. It's not free. And there's liability associated with it. Because I'll give you an example of a liability. Uh, we completed an RR-105C and the question was, is there asbestos in the property? Our answer was no. Because the RR-105C is a managing agent's disclosure of the common elements. And so the association previously had hired a company to remediate, remove all the asbestos, and there is no asbestos in the common elements. That, and the managing agent knew this? Knew that and said no. Well, the owner, who, the buyer found out in the apartment there was asbestos. And if you look at the history, some people had taken that out and some had not. We as the managing agent would know it. And so they filed a complaint that they wanted us to pay the $3,500 to have the asbestos remediated and part of their kitchen remodeling program. And, and we took the position, no, the, it was a disclosure, and what we disclosed was accurate, and frankly, information came out that the resident manager told the buyer that it was asbestos and a bunch of other things, so it kind of died a natural death. But the point is, there's liability for the management company. And what's ironic about this thing, you know, not only does the buyer want the R105C, the lender wants the RR-105C, and they each owner order their own RR-105C because they want to make sure they got it directly from the management company and the date they ordered it based on that specific unit, even though it's the common elements uh, for their file. And why would the lender want this information? Well, in that is information about is there a future assessment, which might affect the uh, credibility of the buyer's credit, for example. They don't want to insure something where the building's not well maintained. You could have, it has information about lawsuits filed. You know, so a lawsuit could result in a judgment against the association depending on the type of lawsuit 
It is. So it's do they ask questions about owner occupancy? They do. And so how does owner occupancy affect the lender? Well, I think, you know, if you look at the, these uh, government loans through FHA, you know, they want a certain percentage to be an owner-occupied building. They don't want to do condo hotels with front desk operations. They don't meet their lending criteria. So they get kind of a broad brush. And I would tell you this, even though we have this R105C that was developed by the Hawaii Associated Realtors in about 1992 or three, we still have lenders that give us a supplemental questionnaire with a whole bunch of additional questions because it's, they're concerned about the lending criteria. The second thing is called the statement of account that's ordered by us, not by us, by the escrow company, saying I want to pay off as of this date. Well, in most large companies, an owner can go in and look at their ledger online, and they could theoretically print that out and give it to the lender and say, here's my current ledger. The lender won't take that, because you can, you can see you could have a unit closing, and this is mid-June, closing in early July, well, what would not be the ledger is any assessment due July 1, for example. If there's a payoff of the loan balance, if there's delinquency and fines and things like that, because you can't always put fines in a ledger if there's a dispute about it. So the escrow company comes and says, I want a certified balance of payoff in this state. It requires research about other fines, outstanding, what's the deal with the situation. And so it, it takes special time, and there's a fee for this signature and certification because you could be assured that if we gave the wrong amount and there was a balance left on the unit at the end of the day, and we didn't do our due diligence, who they're going to ask to pay us. Right. So realtors don't understand that there's a great deal of work, that the, uh, it's not just a bunch of static documents. That, so are, are you saying that some people think that this should be free? Yes. There's actually a class <laughs> action lawsuit on there today um, where a uh, attorney representing an owner who had to pay for documents at closing and ironically enough, this owner happened to have stopped payment on his maintenance fee check. It would have been the perfect example if you'd taken the ledger and closed on it, you'd been wrong. You know, yeah. but there's a realtor, there's a lawsuit now saying that you have to provide these documents for free. And, 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 and the argument they use is several arguments in this, but one is these are all association documents and the R0105C and statement of account are not association documents, are not kept in the ordinary course of business. And they're not, they don't relate to the association, they relate to the specific right. unit. But with regard to this, what, the, the, the statute 514B, it says that if an owner is able to download a document from an association website, it must be for free. Well, what is downloading a document? Well, downloading a document is not a realtor going into a site ordering documents online, certifying they're willing to pay for them, this RO105C, and then later us sending them a link to a Dropbox where they can go and, and, uh, and download it and read it. It's, it's not the same animal. And, and the documents that you, you talked about, the, the, the realtor documents, these are blank forms that have to be filled in by somebody. Somebody or, has to sit down and answer the questions and fill in the blanks. Right, and they have to be reviewed. Because you can imagine the problem um, of an owner that uh, is told there is no assessment, he finds out there is an assessment. So we've certified there is no assessment, he finds out the next day that we knew there was because a night before last, and the minutes haven't been published yet, but we were there at the meeting and, then, and at that board meeting they voted for an assessment. Right. So it takes personal time. and. And frankly, I have to say one thing about Hawaii. We've had a, a really good track record in the real estate industry of very few lawsuits on closing with realtors and disclosures and things. Because there's a lot of due diligence, a lot of requirements, and a lot of good rules to the Hawaii Association of Realtors. But we can't, as the managing agent, even though we have no legal obligation to fill out this form, not do our due diligence, which requires us to put personal time in it, which requires us to ask for reimbursement and pay for it. Right, and, 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 and like I said, you know, the, these forms are not something that's prepared for, prepared by the association. No. For the unit owner. No. And it's a request made in, in response to a specific transaction affecting only the unit owner who's selling his unit. Correct, and, and they're due within 10 days. So it's not a matter of, you can just kind of put it in a work process file. Someone has got to put this in their queue to work on it to make sure the realtor gets her documents timely so that they can close her transaction. Right, and because if the transaction doesn't close, 
then there are consequences uh, for everybody, including a lender who probably is ready to close and has documents ready. And if he's told that, oh, well, we can't close because we don't have all our documents, that means closing gets uh, moved down and extended and everything else has to change. And maybe all the numbers, all the final escrow cl uh, closing numbers, yeah, all have to be adjusted. It could affect the, the loan guarantee that they're promised a loan at this rate of interest if it takes too long. Right. You know, it could affect a lot of things. So I think it's a very important matter. And, you know, I, th I don't think the, you know, we did an analysis the other day of when you back out the R105C in the statement of account, Management companies are charging less than 20 cents a page for the documents that are static, you know, which is certainly reasonable. Right, and you know, for the for the information that they that that is provided in these documents, it would probably be unreasonable for uh, somebody in in the industry to expect ex expect that it would, they would get it, get it for free. Yeah, and the last comment I'd make is sometimes you have an association that also belongs to a master association that also has a rec association, and so they get an order of the documents for all three associations. So the costs are about triple mm -hmm. because of the nature of that project that they have the regular association, the master, and in some cases a rec association or a road association. And the realtor wants the buyer to have all the documents related to that because you could have an incidental association like a road association. It's about to have a big assessment to repave the road. Right. And so in those cases, you end up with three sets of documents, one for each association. Okay. Well, you know, and 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 it and this this goes to full disclosure to a prospective buyer, right? Which is very important. And you know, and so you know, I I, I think that the uh, costs associated with preparing these documents is probably warranted. And right now we are out of time, so we're going to have to come back and have another discussion on this. You know, down the road. Thank you very much for Always joining me on the show. And please tune in next week for another episode of Condo Insider the show about condo living. Thank you.